Hey, buddy. How you doing? How you doing? do back here, man? Oh, uh, work the gate and work the gate. Who's the gate? This is my dad. Oh. Your dad? Who's the computer? Your daddy? Andrew McKee. Okay. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where, where you from? Uh, Lexington. Lexington? Yeah. You want to get on the real players, man? Oh, yeah, man. I love it. Yeah. I'm watching it on Instagram, man. Yeah. What you think about the real players, man? That's my favorite. I watch them on Instagram, you know, going to the barbershop in Saratoga. It's a cool show. What's the favorite thing about the real players? Uh, that they interview the good old guys, you know, the guys that don't get a lot of attention. They've been here. They put in all the hard work years ago. Nobody remembers them, you know. You don't see races named after them, and you guys give some attention to those good guys that built the sport, you know. What's your connection to the game, man? Um, my dad trains, Andrew McKeever. Uh, he's a trainer, and so... I figured when I when I was growing up, I was wanted to train horses, so just got into it, you know. Started hot walking and everything, and trying trying to go up now. What makes this game so special for you, man? That got you waking up. Winning races. Winning races. It's a drug, you know. It's an adrenaline rush like no other, you know. Even if you if you walk in the horse, you pet the horse, whatever. If you're connected to that horse and he wins the race, it's unbelievable. There's an unbelievable feeling, you know. The win feel like almost yours. Yeah, I mean, and even if you're two dollar bet on a horse, you're cheering him, you're screaming him on down the stretch. I mean, you're you're watching a football game Monday night. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're cheering your team on, but you're not doing that yeah. over a two dollar bet, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, who was a mentor for you besides your dad? Oh, that's a tough one. There's a lot. Um, a mentor. He wasn't really my mentor. I never got to meet him, but Charlie Whittingham. Yeah. Uh, I read his book. I read a lot about him. That'd be a guy that I try and follow. You know, do what I mean, it's like, thanks he did. Unbelievable. You know, that that's who I consider one of the greatest trainers ever. What about Charlie that inspired you so much? Just his hard work and determination, you know, he came from nothing and uh went to war and you know, sort of gave that I guess that's what made him who he was. Just a hard, tough man. He, you know, if you read his book the early on, he it was just him like, you know, old backsides, they were just crazy, horses running around everywhere. And, for him to make it all the way from there, you know, just a little boy, no shoes, nothing, all the way up to the top. Unbelievable. Wow. What's your aspirations in this in, in this life? I'd like to win the Kentucky Derby. You know, it's a big goal. You know, it probably won't happen, but that'd be my goal. Thank you, Chance. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. All right? Huh? Morning. Interview. Interview. Oh my God. G E O R G I A. Uh huh. And then Jackson. That's perfect. How you guys started in this life? Oh man, <laughs> a long time ago when I was about six, 16 years old, I started riding four horses in Kansas. What was what was racing like back 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 then in the, in that era? It was tough for women riders yeah. at that time, because then I went from uh, Kansas and I started riding Thurbridge in Nebraska, yeah. and it was really, really tough for women riders. There wasn't that many then, but yeah. there is a lot less then than there is now, that women weren't supposed to be riding racehorses. Yeah. They were supposed to be home, yeah. you know, keeping the house and everything else, you know, taking care of kids and stuff like that. Because back then you didn't even see very many women trainers. Yeah. And this is in the early 70s. Yeah. And then 77, 78, the same thing. Up, up north, everybody just kind of, you know, men were men. Yeah. Women weren't supposed to be in horse racing. Wow. So, you know, there's a few women trainers, but not that many. Who was a who, who was a mentor that encouraged you to get involved in? Oh, at the time I was real little. So there was a guy that had some four horses. He said, "Won't you ride? Because you're little." And that's where I just got started in four horses. And I just gradually went from there, from four horses to thoroughbreds. You know, back then. You know, you, everybody just sat on your horses and took care of your horses. You know, they, like, they'd rub on a horse like a half hour a day. You know, just to take care of them back then because it just wasn't that much you could do, you know, to sit on and take care of them. Yeah. So you just had to do it the hard way. If people really was more hands-on. More hands-on. A lot more hands-on back then. And, and, and you so. know, right, the name of my program is The Real Players Inside the Backstretch. How important 
is the men and women that take care of these horses every single Very day. Very important. Because yeah. without them, we wouldn't have a business. Yeah. Because they take care of the horses 24-7 every day. Yeah. And without that, you don't have nothing. And you know, what's some of the good horses you've been around? Oh, Lordy. Um, <laughs> I had a filly a long time ago. Uh, her name was Runway Model. We went to the Breeders' Cup, and she ran third as a two-year-old. Wow. And uh, other than that, there wasn't no any really, really big ones, just a lot of lounge horses. But she was probably the biggest stakes filly I've ever been around. You know, who were some of the good grooms under the Chevrolets back in the in, 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 in oh. the 70s that people probably don't even remember and never even heard of, man? Who were these people? Oh, man, I can't remember the names right offhand. That's too long ago. Yeah. I've been doing this too long. Yeah. <laughs> but these guys were some great grooms, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if you go back to the old way, it, it'd be a lot better. Yeah. Because people sit there and take care of your horses a lot better. It just don't happen that way anymore. And you know, in your lifetime, right, who goes down as the, the best trainer in your lifetime? Who's that Who's that person? Probably one of the top trainers would be probably Marion Van Berg and Jack Van Berg. Huh? Um, at that time, when that era in the in the Midwest, but probably in the South, it'd be a couple other different people. I just can't think of their names right offhand. Yeah. But uh, in my era, probably Marion Van Berg and Jack Van Berg. 